back to Main Street. In this video, I am going to be giving you some tips. I think I have about maybe 10 of them on, originally it was on how to say vigilant. Girl. Originally it was how to say vigilant in New York City. However, I think this kind of goes for all cities or if you are traveling alone, um, as you all know, or if you don't know, I am a flight attendant, so I'm used to traveling alone and being on layovers um, as a solo person. So if you're interested in my tips, just stay tuned. Okay, so number one, if you don't watch my vlogs, which you should be doing, okay? I think it's Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Okay, get your life. I'm just gonna let you know. The neighbors upstairs have a pet elephant, apparently. Okay, so just, if you hear the creaking, cracking, random thunder, it's them. There's birds chirping, my window is closed. However, let's get right into this video. Number one, always peep what's around you. Don't be hyper-focused on your phone. Pay attention. Number one, in New York, I'm gonna speak for New York. Number one, dog shit everywhere, okay? You don't wanna be stepping in dog shit. We'll bump into you. Um, anything could happen. I mean, it's cool to look at your phone sometimes, but just be aware, like keep your eyes up in the alert. Please. Number two, <laughs> keep valuables out of sight, but reachable. As an example, I would definitely say like when I wear my hoodies and stuff in New York, when it was a little bit colder, I would have my wallet like in my pocket, in my hand. So I'm walking like this or I would have it in my jeans. It's somewhere like constantly on me so I can feel it and I know that it's there. Um, it may be a little uncomfortable, but at least you got your shit, okay? I say this because a lot of people wear like backpacks or purses or something. And you know, some people may keep their valuables like their wallet or their camera or something like that in their backpack. If you can help it, don't do that or you know, I would do that if I was with someone and you know, there's an extra set of eyes. Speaking for me personally, I would not keep, first of all, I don't even like walking around with a purse. I'm not a purse girl. I will wear one when, you know, the outfit it calls for it or whatever, but I usually don't. The sacred place in my bra. <laughs> Number three, know where you're going. And if you don't know, act like it. This is a big thing in New York. People can always, I can even tell when people are lost and that is not, when you are solo, that is not a good look. Be wandering or stopping in the middle of, that is, also that is a pet peeve. Do not be stopping in the middle of the sidewalk. Keep walking or pull over, okay? <laughs> and that kind of segues into, if you don't know where you're going, act like you do until you find somewhere safe that you can go, like a store or a restaurant or something, and just get it together. Do not look lost on the streets of New York, on the streets of anywhere, but definitely not New York. Number four, pay attention to landmarks, food places, clothing stores, anything, because you never know if your phone's gonna die, if something happens, it's, you know, anything. Just, it's always good to at least be like, oh, okay, I took a left at the McDonald's, or oh, yeah, yeah, I remember I kept straight and the H&M was on my left or on my right. Number five, do not use the same routes for your frequent destinations. I live in New York now, um, and I'm constantly going to either um, LaGuardiana, <laughs> that is the name I've, I've coined it now since we can't call it La Garbage because it's all brand new. So LaGuardiana or Kennedy, right? So I'm either going there or I'm going home. I never take the same route. I may take the same bus, but I may get off at a different stop or you know whatever, or I may catch an Uber. You just, you never want to keep going the same way all the time. This is for girls and guys that live in the city. Go to the same laundromat or I would go to the same grocery store. And I always switched up my routes. The laundromat, I couldn't do too much because it was literally like three blocks down right there. But everything else, I was always taking different routes. And it's always good to know different routes. Number six, always verify the license plate and name of your Uber driver before getting in the Uber or Lyft or whatever. And always, 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 I learned this trick from my mom, reopen the door um, and check for child lock. I don't think I have to explain too much on this one. It's just kind of like, duh, hello. Always verify. I did have an instance where I was, it was like maybe like 5.30 in the morning. And I felt kind of weird because there was a white van at the end of the road, um, maybe like 
50 feet from where I was standing. There's a white van there. And then this Uber, well, I used Lyft that day, but the Lyft pulled up. He was pulling up as I was walking out of my building. So he pulled up and kind of like crept a little bit. And it was the same vehicle that my, my Lyft app was on, but it looked very, very sketchy. Like the guy looked sketchy. You know, the car on the inside looked at us, and I was like, mm, let me just stand in here. And then when he kind of, he kept looking around, looking around, and then he drove off. And I'm like, what the So I canceled that lift when I saw the guy creeping and all that stuff. I canceled the lift. I was like, no, well, we're not doing that. So then I reopened, I opened Uber, and I chose Uber instead, and a totally different person pulled up, right? So when I went out there, I verified everything, blah, blah, blah. He helped me with my bags. I got in. And the weirdest thing was when we were driving, the van just pulled straight out, like just left. And when, like right before we passed it, like pulled out in front of us and ran. And I was ran, <laughs> drove off. And I was like, that was so weird. I don't know. So it could have been nothing, but it very much could have been something. Okay. I actually have a pin code with Uber. So whenever I, um, request a ride it either auto verifies when the phones are close enough or they have to put in the pin that i give them before they can start the ride so i thought that was a great touch so shout out to y'all at uber number seven share your ride with someone you know or trust especially after hours my hours are very weird sometimes and um you just never know or if you're going out you know, and you have a late night or, you know, you have to catch a, just make sure you're sharing your ride with somebody. Even if you don't feel like you need to, um, it's always a good idea. It's never a bad idea to share your ride. Number eight, this one is kind of funny because it's really up to personal choice. Coffee break. This is honestly for my ladies, to be quite honest. Practice your me mug, especially if you, our public transportation girl like myself that does not like paying $80 Ubers to go four miles, ridiculous. I hate to say it, but like, you shouldn't be looking approachable. And that is just my preference, my opinion. Um, as a woman, I do not wanna look approachable to anybody on the subway, anybody. Like I, no, it's just been crazy stuff going on on these subways lately, on these buses, just in the world in general and I move with the purpose, I walk with the purpose. I'm very vigilant when it comes to me traveling alone and being alone in the city. I don't wanna look approachable. Will I be mean? Absolutely not. But I will have a mean girl face. I will have a stink face. And it's not like, you know, the entire ride, but it's very much. It's giving, don't talk to me, but I will very much get up and let that old lady sit down but I'm watching you. Number nine, do not blast your music. Stay aware of your surroundings. I see a lot of young people and maybe they're used to living here or whatever, but I see a lot of younger people blasting their music in their headphones, in their AirPods, whatever. And I just don't think that's a good idea because you can't hear what's going on around you. Um, really that's the main thing. You can't hear what's going on around you. If somebody's screaming for help, if somebody's screaming move, if there's, if there's something going on and you have the noise cancellation things, that's, I don't know. I just don't think that's a good idea. So I would just keep that in mind. Number 10, this is especially for my ladies, secure your bag. Let's say you're going shopping or something like that. And you just have a day in the city. Secure your bags in a way that that whole, hey miss, you drop something. Cause that's happened to me so many times. And I just keep walking. Cause I know I didn't drop anything because of how I'm holding my bags. Let's say I have a purse. I'm gonna make sure my purse is on my arm first. So it's closest to me. If somebody tries to come and yank something off my arm, it's not the first to go, honestly. Um, that's if I were to have a purse. But just make sure you're securing your items even before you leave the store. If you can put stuff in one bag and just have less bags, perfect. You know what I mean? And make sure nothing's falling out. Make sure all your valuables, like even if you have to put your valuables at the very end of the bottom of the bag, do that. But just make sure that you're not just all willy nilly out here with your stuff. Heard some stories, especially on layovers in different countries. Um, it gets crazy, okay? All right. 
Number 11. This goes for my people with a car. If you have a car, if you're walking up on it, you need to be scanning the area around your car. I used to do this when I had a car back in Georgia, but make sure that you're looking around. There was this thing going on. I don't know if it was going on in different states, but they were putting zip ties on women's cars, like pretty much just scoping them out and watching them walk away, put the zip tie on. And the woman would get so, you know, caught up in the zip tie and they would be kidnapping women, which is so sad. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. But when you're walking up on your car, you need to make sure that you're looking around. You need to make sure, you know, there's, that you got eyes on the people that's in their cars near your car, all that stuff. You need to make sure you have your keys in your hand, ready to get in the car, ready to open the, I know people probably use the little clicker things now, but anyway, when you get in your car, the very first thing you need to do is lock your doors. Don't, especially women that vlog and, you know, men too, men too. It could happen to any, anybody, but your main priority needs to be locking those doors, period. That's it, in the discussion. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have more tips or you wanna elaborate on anything that I said, please feel free to leave a comment. Any comments that you leave, I'm sure will help the next person. And um, I probably forgot some things, but yeah, like I said, feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to like the video, only if you liked it, honestly. Um, subscribe to my channel. I have vlogs almost every week. And um, yeah, so thank you all for watching. Bye.